I remember in high school, I decided to test out Ubuntu. So I installed that on my old laptop and it never really convinced me of Linux. It never switched me over. It never piqued my interest more than just installing it, messing around with it for like a day and then never going back to it again. But as of a few months ago, I started seeing a lot of people, particularly on social media, talking about how they're switching to Linux or how they're ditching Windows. And it kind of got me thinking, let me revisit Linux and let me pick a distro that would be as close as possible to Mac OS because that's my preferred OS. I landed on Fedora and I installed it on my old Razor Blade Stealth. And it's not the most powerful computer, which makes it the best computer to try out Linux on. So what has been my experience with Linux? I think Linux has a place as a desktop OS, as an alternative to Windows and alternative to Mac OS. If you've watched some of my other videos, when I talk about old tech or uh, making use of your old tech and stuff like, or just bringing life into new tech, I always repeat the, the saying of, oh, well, it's good for the general consumer. It works as uh, for general computer tasks, like internet, Netflix, whatever. I, I frequently say that for older tech, and it's very true. For a lot of people, if they're older, like your parents maybe, or uh, someone who's just a, a child or teen that's getting their first laptop, they're not really gonna be doing anything crazy with it, or they, they might not be. So a lot of old tech can serve as that need. Uh, just a general purpose computer for writing documents, stuff like that. And I think Linux is perfectly fine for that, especially since there's no bloat. There's, there's no unnecessary software. There's no login. There's no Microsoft account that needs to be activated. Uh, no Mac OS, no Apple ID that needs to be logged in. There's none of that like cloud stuff. It's kind of just an OS that's just an OS with nothing else. It's just an, a functional OS for you to do your computer tasks. I was actually telling my mom, I said, you could use this OS. Like Linux is always seen as kind of like an intimidating thing. But once I show you that this is your file explorer, it looks like every other file explorer. Once you open it, it's not really that intimidating. Then this is your browser. These are your settings. And then this is your app store. The app store in these beginner popular Linux distributions. Fedora has one, Pop! OS has one, I believe Ubuntu has one as well. Um, but these app stores make it super, super easy to install software on Linux. Whereas in the past, it would be a little bit more intimidating because you need to be doing commands and stuff like that. Um, in some distros, you still do have to do that. But these app stores make it very easy. Basically, just like using a Mac, app, the Mac app store or the Windows store, you just search for whatever app you want, or there's categories, and then you just click install and you're done. So it's very easy to get into. Another thing I found myself really liking and that I found weird that we don't have in Mac OS or Windows yet is the ability to easily add extensions, tweaks, themes, change your icons. The ability to do that is very easy. You just install the tweaks app, the extensions app, and then download as many tweaks, extensions, and themes as you want, and then change it day by day if you want. If one day you're feeling more cartoony icons, go ahead, put that. If you want more, iOS Mac themed apps, go ahead, you can get that too. You could basically customize it with the click of a button by just downloading different themes and then activating them very easily. Changing your cursor is also really cool. I found that there's a lot of customization that we're kind of losing out on other OSs. So I thought that was a really cool little fun thing. You just personalize your computer to basically however you want. So the more I use it, the more I was exploring, messing around with it, the more I found myself thinking and considering okay, could I switch to this as like a main OS and just forget about Mac OS, forget about Windows. And slowly I was like, yeah, I kind of can, except for one thing. There's very little support for pro apps on Linux. I use DaVinci Resolve to edit these videos and it does support Linux. It can be installed on Fedora and other distros. It's a lot of tutorials, but the Razor Blade is an old computer. I wasn't gonna edit video on that. I know it can't handle it. So I kind of just, I'll take the internet's word for it, that it works and it, it does officially support Linux. So that's cool. But Lightroom is basically one of my most used apps on, well, in my life. And it doesn't support Linux. It's not on Linux at all. So I would have had to find an alternative. And I did find some open source alternatives, but they're not that great. Darktable and Raw Therapy are two of the most popular alternatives. And I got these directly from the app store. It wasn't a hassle to install. And they do work, but I feel like it would take a while for me to get used to it. The controls are a little bit different. The layout's different. Um, it would just take a little bit of time before I can really edit the same way I can edit on Lightroom because I'm familiar with 
how it works, where the sliders are, and I kind of just know what I'm doing. Kind of like second nature. I just know, okay, boom, boom, boom. I have my editing style. But Darktable is structured a little bit differently. It It's a little bit weird, but it works. That That's the thing. It really does work. So if you're strictly a photographer, or you're just maybe a, a hobby photographer, a professional, and you want to switch to Linux, I think it is doable because you do have this software that can enable you to develop your raw files. It's not gonna be as good as Lightroom, and I feel like if Lightroom was on Linux and officially did support it, I think that there'd be a lot more people switching over. But the fact that DaVinci Resolve is already on Linux, I think that kind of opens the door for more pro apps to kind of just start entering that Linux market. So I think that's really cool. I wanna give you guys some tips on installing Linux for the first time if you're interested in messing around with it, which I highly recommend you do, because why not? Just try something new, mess around with it, see if you like it. But I wanna to pivot to gaming for a second because I think it's a big part of the future of Linux. I made a video a while ago talking about how gaming on my Mac was good. And it is good, but gaming on Linux is even better. The Steam Deck runs Linux. The upcoming Steam Machine is gonna run Linux. If you're a gamer, Linux certainly does have a place in your life to replace Windows if you're kind of just fed up with how it runs, bloatware, all the topics we spoke about earlier on. If you're a gamer that plays a lot of games that don't require kernel level anti-cheat, I think Linux is a great alternative to Windows. You can install Steam directly from these Linux app stores, and once it's installed, all you gotta do is enable, if it's not already, the compatibility layer of Proton, and then that's it. Your games are just gonna work. Once you check off compatible Linux games, I guarantee you most, if not all, of your library is just gonna be fully compatible with your Linux OS. I've loved my experience with the Steam Deck and I can easily say without a doubt that Linux gaming is a very viable option because every time I launch a game from that thing, you see it in the back there, every time I launch a game, it kind of just like opens and works. So these compatibility layers, the way Steam has integrated this, I think as we go on, we're gonna see Valve continue to develop Steam OS and then Proton's compatibility layers are gonna be even better. So. I really don't have a doubt that Linux gaming is gonna hold a real place in the future, at least for those of us that wanna to switch to Linux. All right, onto tips you should know if you wanna try Linux, which I recommend you all do, because why not? You know, if you're into tech, it's a fun thing to do. First thing you wanna do is obviously pick which one you wanna go with. I went with Fedora, you can go with Ubuntu, you can go with Pop! OS, you can go with Linux Mint. Those are all very popular options for beginners just to mess around with and get a feel for it. There's a lot of great tutorials, so just Google a tutorial and you'll see exactly if you want a walkthrough which I think benefits everybody. And I used one as well. Look, there's no shame in using a walkthrough because you know sometimes it gets confusing, especially if you're dual booting. That's where it gets a little bit weird. All right, so there's a few ways of installing Linux. You can go for a virtual machine route, which if you have an Apple Silicon Mac, that's probably what you're gonna wanna do. I'd recommend using a free virtual machine called UTM. I've used it, I've tried it out. I've installed Fedora on my MacBook in this way. But if you're like me and wanted to get more of a native feeling laptop OS feel, you can install it on an old computer directly to that hard drive. You can dual boot it and keep Windows or you can be a crazy son of a and just completely format the whole thing and install just Linux. So that's your choice, that's up to you. Let me know in the comments below what you do. If you have an old laptop, I'd recommend that route because it will give you the best possible feel for Linux because it's just running as a native OS. There's no virtualization going on. I'd also like to recommend just try whatever you want in Linux. Once you get an idea just to install something, just try to install it, see if it runs. If it doesn't work, you get errors. There's plenty of resources online that can help you from just either straight up copy pasting stuff, commands and terminal, whatever, or just full on walk through YouTube videos, which are always great. But you know, I had to do that on my razor blade. I needed to install a special piece of software in order to use the RGB functionality of the keyboard. And you know, I ran into a little bit of issues, nothing crazy, but there was plenty of resources online because there's plenty of people that are messing around with Linux that can help you out. And then after a while, once you start doing the commands, you kind of see how it works. And the, the farther in you get, the deeper you dig yourself in, the more you need to dig, your, what am I saying? The deeper in you are, the more you're gonna learn. That's, that's basically what I'm trying to say. So I just wanna recommend everybody to try Linux out. Um, I'm not gonna switch yet, but I really do see a potential for Linux to be in more people's lives because anytime you hear Linux, you're a little bit intimidated, but it's come a long way and I feel like it's going to go even farther. And as we go into 2026, 2027, there's gonna be, I think, a lot more people that are adopting and switching to Linux because of how well it's maintained, how well it's designed, and just the ease of use. It's, become, it's becoming easier and easier to use Linux, 
Like I mentioned, the App Store, I think that's a very big part, and I think that's something that can easily transition people to adopting more desktop Linux OSs. So that basically wraps up the video. Let me know in the comments below if you've messed around with Linux, maybe you've switched, what distro you're using. Really wanna hear what you guys think. So let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.